question is always asked, what is the hope for a cure today? And also, what can we do to prevent infection in the first place? Well, as we talked about what we can do to prevent infection in the first place is this issue of self-containment, washing your hands, the power of soap. And frankly, the most important, one of the most important things is the elbow bump. Stop doing handshaking. The issue of the cure is a complex issue because we have to talk about what is the difference between a treatment for those that are ill versus what is a vaccine that will prevent the infection from happening. And I'll try and address that. I'll try and explain the difference between a treatment and a vaccine. But I think we also would like to discuss what new treatments are being developed today. And I'm excited to say that the entire world community of scientists and pharmaceutical companies and biotechnology companies are frantically working 24-7 to find new treatments that are being developed. I'll have to address uh, with uh, scientific vigor about how long will a vaccine take to develop. But I think of great concern is what is our manufacturing capacity should we uh, need some of these vaccines or these treatments urgently? So let's start. Uh, the first question is, uh, how long will it take to develop a treatment or vaccine? First, let's even talk about what's the difference between a treatment versus a vaccine, because I think there's a lot of confusion around there. A vaccine is like that what you have for flu. We create a shot, a subcutaneous shot, and using a vector, uh, sometimes a common cold vector, or what we call an adenovirus, in which we put the sequence of this uh, SARS-CoV-2 into this to train and educate your body to recognize this virus and have readily available killer cells to prevent you getting infected. That's a vaccine. Unfortunately, that'll take a while to develop because testing needs to be done about the effectiveness of that vaccine in giving you true protection. On the other hand, we have patients that are ill, critically ill, mildly ill, that we can take a patient that is mildly ill and prevent it from becoming critically ill. We can take a patient that's critically ill from becoming severely to the point of fatal, fatally ill and to understand how we can do that. I think treatment for these kinds of patients are much closer at hand. This virus works by hijacking a receptor in your body. It takes this receptor, uses the machinery of the lung, and actually replicates and infects the lung to the point of fibrosis and death. Worse, this virus has found a way to evade the immune system. It's found a way to actually kill the natural killer cells in your body, the T cells in your body. From the data again from China, what we've discovered is that the patients who die, not only are they elderly, but they have a low natural killer cell and T cell count. So we're beginning to understand this complex biology of this virus. And that's why I'm saying we're looking at it from a perspective, not about the virus, but the host. So if we could understand the host's reaction and create counter reactions to this, we have a shot for treatment. So let me speak a little bit about treatment. There are multiple strategies. The first strategy is to take this concept that the virus has hijacked this receptor in our human body called the ACE. So this ACE receptor is the first port of entry. So if we could block the entry of this virus through this ACE receptor, we could block the entire cascade of its ability to use the engine and the machinery to regenerate. Well, happily and luckily, we have now have scientists, and this is as recently as this month, understanding this ACE receptor through the power of genomics, through the power of supercomputing, through the power of protein folding, this complex receptor in our human body is now being be able to understood. And because we can understand this receptor, we can find systems to create decoys and sponges so that this receptor cannot be attacked so that the virus can be 
uh, as a Trojan horse blocked from entering this. This complex science is now being attacked worldwide by scientists around the world and is a very exciting strategy. The other strategy is to say, could we block the machinery? And the answer to that is yes, because we now understand how this virus replicates. The third strategy is could we block the, what we call the endosomal packaging and block that. And what's exciting is we've now discovered potentially, and I say this potentially because science is not fully uh, borne out, and this is an experience in China, that old uh, drugs repurposed can actually block these packaging systems inside the cell of the human cell and ameliorate this disease. And a fourth strategy is to actually kill the factory of the virus itself. It turns out the way this virus works, it has found a way to kill the natural killer cells and T cells of the human body. From the results we've seen from China uh, in the patients who had a, fat a fatal outcome in the elderly, the lymphocytes, or what we call the natural killer cells and T cells, are depleted, significantly depleted. Whether that's an effect of the virus or whether the patients are immunosuppressed or had pre-existing conditions, including cancer, uh, we, it's not clear yet. But what is important and is clear is that these natural killer cells or T cells are depleted. However, we have in our innate system the ability to kill infected cells. So a very interesting strategy is to activate these natural killer cells that, as you could see from this diagram, has an ability to identify, lock onto, and, and really push what they call granzymes and into these cells and destroy them. The way it will destroy them, it will actually completely almost dissolve the cell. And in so doing, we can then kill the factory itself. So the opportunity here now is not to affect the virus, but the factory of the virus and, de and prevent its depletion. And in so doing, it may in induce also uh, a memory or a vaccine and maybe even have a dual effect of reducing the infection, killing the infected cell, and allowing the patient's own immune system to get reactivated. That, these are the four opportunities that now face us as strategies for the scientific community to come together and work frantically towards, number one, blocking the receptor, preventing it from entering. Number two, destroying the machinery, preventing it from replicating. Number three, preventing from repackaging and shedding. And number four, killing the factory itself. These are opportunities that gives us hope, and I hope will provide some level of comfort that the world working together uh, will be able to find a way to stop this virus, stop this pandemic, and learn a lot about infectious diseases.